right. So today we'll be talking about building AI powered applications with launching. But here's the thing, right? This is a AI ML data conference. So we have to be really specific. Right? So it's not necessarily it's not necessarily AI. AI is a large umbrella that has machine learning, deep learning, you have neural networks, you have many things under that AI umbrella, right? So we want to be really specific. And so I had to change the topic. So it's really building LLM powered applications with Langchain. Um, wow. I'm awesome. Wow. All right, so yeah, my name is Israel Nosse. I'm an ML engineer. I'm, a, I'm also an ML researcher and technical contributor at Arise. Um, I've worked at, I worked with Neptune AI, Ambassador. I'm also a retired foodie. The economy is hard, so we have to cut corners, you know. I'm um, also in Taro Kabe in the flesh. Now, quick one. How many of you here watch anime? The other guys, you watch. My people, come to the front. Come to the front. Please, please go back, please. You watch anime, sorry. Do you watch anime? Please. Please, if you, if you watch anime, come to the front, please. Come to the front. Let me look at you so that this rest, they are. You guys are here. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So let me know waste your time. So the outline for today is we're looking at what are LLM power applications, why should we care about it, and what exactly Langchain does, how it works, the benefits of using it. We're not necessarily going to the benefits, the benefits speaks for themselves, and we'll do a Langchain workshop if time permits. So my mouth is getting dry. Please. The water is here. Okay. Okay. Also, so they told me I have 30 minutes. So, um, help me. Once is in the next 15 minutes, tell me get out of here. Let me not waste anybody's time. All right. So, LLM powered applications, right? Now, let's really look at what LLMs are before we talk about LLM applications. So, with a show of hands, how many body. Who knows what an LLM is? LLM. You've heard it before, you've seen it, you've used it, you've experimented with it. All right, anybody, just tell me what it is. You're already holding my phone, don't worry. All right. My name is Oop. LLM are AI system trained on large corpus of text, give them the ability to understand the statistical and grammatical relationship between the text, giving them ability to predict the next word in the text. So sorry. Beautiful. In fact, I don't need to show my next slide. She did justice to it. Right, that's basically what LLMs are. Uh, so the type, the type of AI model, the so LLMs are large language models. So a type of AI model that uses deep learning techniques to understand text and generate new content. Basically, that's what they are, right? Um, so the process that the process that they go through allows them to understand and learn more parameters, more things. Right, um, so, and it can be used for a lot of things. We are barely scratching the surface of what LLMs can really do. Recently, um, how many of you have used OpenAI DALI E text to images? Right, it's crazy. So we're we just we're just scratching the surface. So this and a lot more. Right, so this is like a slide, a picture presentation of different AI models that are out there. So LLM models, right? Um, so you have your GPT, you have your Lambda, a lot, a lot. So yeah, a lot, right? Now, and it's really expensive to build all of this, right? So but we want to use them. We want to have applications that are powered by GPT-3. OK, so this is private. We want an application that is powered by Palm, Palm 2, 
GPT-4, Lama. Those applications powered by these things. So how do we do it? And that's what this talk is about. Uh, so everybody here is familiar with chat GPT. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Let me ask. Can you help me? Let me ask. Who has not used chat GPT here? Let's do the infidels in our knees. Oh, yeah, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. You with the glasses. Oh, yeah, leave this place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave this place. Sit down. I'm joking. I'm joking. Sit down. All right. Okay, so you've all used ChatGPT before. You've seen what it can do. You've seen all the beautiful things ChatGPT can do. Don't use it to cheat, please. All right, don't use it to cheat. But it can do a lot of beautiful things. All right. Now, but there are two problems with ChatGPT. The current ChatGPT, right? So it is it has limited knowledge, and that's because it was trained on data from. I think the last date was 2021, right? So if you ask it, who is age zero? Well, it will know me, I mean, I mean, it will know me, but you get the gist. Also, the cost of using the OpenAI API can be, ex can be a bit expensive when you are scaling, right? So, now we, are, we know, okay, now we know, so we know. A lot of us here probably know well, ChatGPT is powered by, for those that don't know, it's powered by the GPT-3 and GPT-4. And recently they released GPT-4V, right? So it's, it's good, it's a lot. But what if you were able to, instead of ChatGPT, you had your own GPT-powered application? For example, Adriel GPT. Now, Adriel GPT, you've not seen it yet. It's not going to be on Play Store. It's not going to be anywhere. It just appear on phone. Uh, it's my next AGI. So I'm done building the next AGI. How many of you here know what AGI is? So, like, how many of you are like data professionals here? You've done artificial general intelligence. Um, it's a form of, it's a type of AI that is not super, and it's not normal. It's kind of like in between normal and super intelligence. Sure, man. True. Basically, so basically, artificial intelligence that has give or take what we really call intelligence, something that understands things, understands things in context and can give results in context. Basically, right? So, what we are really here for is not all of this. That was just like a run through. What we are really here for is how we can get how we can build applications that are powered by these models, right? Now, to do that, you need a framework. You need something that has access to new data, unlike ChatGPT, unlike GPT-3 and 4, right? You also need something that can train new data in production easily. Say, for instance, um, the war between the terrorist attack, you know, let me leave that one, it's too controversial. Uh, uh, what's trending on Twitter these days? What's trending there? Well, you can identify this. Just like raise your hand and we take like. Oh, go for beat. Go, go, no allow see buttons. Also, the videos kids. Exactly. That, that's that, I, I, when I saw that I was so happy. Happy for that young man. In case he sees this video, Obio. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as I was saying, um, so you need something that can train on recent data. So there's a stock crash. You want to get the hand, you want your model to be able to have it immediately. So that's what you need, right? Also, you need something that can connect you to multiple LLMs, right? You need something that can connect you to, instead of just being limited to GPT-3 or 4, you need, you want to have Bloom, you want to have a hugging, um, Lama, you want to have a lot of all these other guys, right? And you want something that is pretty cheap, right? You don't want to spend investors' dollars on, on an API or a framework, basically. You want to use that one for marketing and collect 500k per month, 50k per month. You're very current. I like that. 
All right. So you need a connector that can do all of this, right? You need a connector that can access, gives you, give you access to all of this data. You need a connector that can allow for unstructured and structured data, public data, and you want to, you want everything to be in your model, right? So this is where Langchain comes in, right? So Langchain is that framework. Oh, okay, no. In my head, this is not how this talk is supposed to go. So I'm supposed to stop here and now ask, who here knows Langchain and has used Langchain? Oh, wow, a round of applause for yourselves. Nice. All right, good. So that means if I say nonsense, I have people that would change it for me. So I'd be, so I'd be careful. All right, so in case I'm saying nonsense, just tell me like, hey, chief, I'm not saying talk. All right, but let's go. So now, what is Langchain? Right? Langchain is an open source, open source framework designed to build applications powered by LLMs. Right? Um, it provides you with tools to build your application from prototype to production. So you can easily, so the problem with machine learning back in the day was every idea you had, every model you build will die in your notebook. Yes or no? You will build, do state of art, you can't deploy, right? Then deployment things are coming about, then thank God for Streamlits, Thank God for Gradio, thank God for AWS, Azure, and all of these guys that are doing it. In fact, Langchain just recently released a new component yesterday, Langchain Serve. It allows you to deploy too. Right? Yoga. It's the last one. And then there's one that does You guys are not angry I'm drinking water, Abby. You're not? All right, good. All right. <clears throat> So it's also available in Python and TypeScript. Um, it provides a versal interface for numerous foundation models. I already said this. It is model agnostic. I forgot to say that. Uh, so what basically, what, basi what launching really does is this. All the components needed to build your AI LLM model, it brings them together and gives you an output. It gives you, just brings all of that together, right? We'll see more of that. So, to recap, I've said it's open source, right? Um, it is available in Python and TypeScript. It's model agnost agnostic. And, yeah, all of these things I said. You guys heard it, right? All right, good. Let me move. All right, so it basically simplifies the structure. All right, so now, the things, so we want to look at the things that make Langchain Langchain. So now, this is the boring part. I would not mind if you start talking to your friends at this point or walk out. But please listen. Right? This is a very important part. But it's quite boring. All right. Now, Langchain is composed of, as of, as of today, it's composed of six components. You can't hear me. Oh, I am. I'm sorry, guys. I'm come and stay with these people. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The guys at the back. Can you hear me? There. All right, cool. All right. So, Langchain has six components, right? Um, as of yesterday, it became seven. Um, the serve. Well, I did not see it, so let's leave it. All right. So, we have the first uh, component as the schema component. You have the model component, prompt, memory, indexes, agents, chains. And in the next two minutes, three minutes, I'm going to like try and explain what they really do and how they help build your AI models, right? Yeah. All right, so schema. So basically, schema is how you define the structure of your application. Um, how many of you here code? You've code, SQL, whatever, you've written code. Right, good. So you must, you'll be familiar with structure. So basically what schema does is how you structure the input and output flow of your data and your model, basically. So it's, as the name implies, schema. You list out how, what documents you want to use and all of that. It just, there's a whole documentation on that. Go and check it out. All right, good. So, well, it gives you, in the schema model, you have four main classes. So, it's, so the first one is the test schema, 
what that basically is is just you know how ChatGPT is how you just all you just need to do is put in a prompt right put in a text that simple schema so you just want to say all i'm sending in is text so that's a very basic primary interface right and the next is the chat schema so now the thing with the chat schema is a lot of people the first use case for lamp chain or llms is to build a chat bot right so Lamchain took that into consideration and they built these chat messages. All you just need to define your schema is that this is a chat message application. So it just makes it more conversational than robotic, right? Um, so you have examples. How many of you here do prompt engineering? If you are using ChatGPT, when you, if you want to copy, say you want to update your cover letter and you saw a cover letter online. <clears throat> so what you would do is this you will copy that cover letter put it on chat GPT and say, replicate this, but using my own data. So that's basically what the example schema is. <clears throat> it allows you to do that. Also, we have documents. Documents is for how you just, so it's when you are loading in documents, you are telling the LM, lamp gender, hey, the data that I'll be receiving with documents. So you just define the document schema there. All right, so models, 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 models. You know what, guys? Let me drink water. Burner boy, like you know, and so many other genres. Permit me, my mouth gets a little bit dry, and this place is really cold, so it's drying me. And you guys have been great so far. Please, a round of applause for yourselves. A round of applause for yourselves. Clap now. I'm just saying you should clap so that I can feel good. Make me feel good. Clap, clap, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right, as I was saying, so now, another component of lamp chain is the model component, is the, mod the model module, right? And what this basically does is it wraps, so imagine you have your GPT-3, your GPT-4, your Blue model, your Vector AI model, or any of all these LLMs. So what the model component does, it, it, it forms a wrapper around that model and allows you to use that model to train your data or do whatever you want to do with it. And Langchain has been so generous, I think they have about 70, <coughs> 74 um, integrated models inside Langchain, right? So you can pick from any of this. Um, go to Hugging Face, check the best model that is currently benchmarking, pick one, and you can use it here, right? Anyway. It's, so, I think it's on the for models, also Langchain does the same thing, classifies them into three plays. So you have your LLMs, so these are your basic language models. So you have your chat models. Now, the chat model thing is still like an LLM, but we, from research, there's this, um, so how many of you have used, for guys that have built with um, Langchain, you've noticed that if you use GPT 3.5, Tubo, when you are creating a chat bot, it sort of gives better conversational output than you use a GPT-4, right? So, so that, that's so you, all you just need to do is so GPT-3 is a chat model. So you have text embedding models. Um, oh, all right. So next component is prompt. Um, so basically, Langchain allows you to split your prompt. Now we know, let me say this thing. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Now we know that everybody is using ChatGPT or a LLM to build the application. But now the best of the best applications will be the applications with more data and the applications that can fine tune properly. I hope you understand what fine tuning is. That has been able to create it to the correct measurement you want to be able to like, so for example, if I said I want a, I want a cup of water, a Sheldon would ask me, do you want four liters of water, two liters of water, something that fits your correct use case, right? So Langchain does that for you. So in Langchain, you can specify, hey, wait, I'm sorry. Sorry. like data phone being, so like I said, my Korodu people, they followed me. We don't have like solar and chain every day, so they followed me. Yeah, yeah. 
and of course the data science aspect, predictions, and all of that, the clean of data, the uh, matching of mm. YouTube music mm. videos. With all right. Spy, so. Um, it allows you to define how your prompt will be, the value, the templates, the selectors, when you are doing ex selectors. And what I'm really excited and I like is this output parser. Now, if you are using ChatGPT, what you generally do is you put in a text, it returns a text. But say I was building an application and I didn't want text. Say I was doing an open weather, I was feeding from open weather data and I was doing forecasting with an LLM. I don't want text, right? I want the output to be a sunny picture, like emojis, songs, videos. I want the output to be different, right? But you still convey the message of a GPT text. Do you understand that? Now, this ex output parser allows you to do that. So it converts that text and gives you the, let me say your desired output, but the outputs that are generally available for launching. So in JSON format, in image format, JSON and image basically. When you have a JSON format, you can, you know, easily convert to whatever. So yeah, all right. So this is basically an explanation on what um, the prompt value, the prompt template basically does, the example selectors, and what they are responsible for. Right? I think I've explained this already, so I'm just going to run through. All right, so chains. Now, another component in lang chain is a chain component. Now, what this basically does is to bring all the components together. It's basically the pipeline. Now, if you don't define your chain module, your chain components, when you are building, your applications will not run. Because you have your model, you have the output, you have um, the data. You have, if you are doing indexing, you have an index somewhere. So the chain, and it's a very simple line of code, LLM.chain. Basically, just wraps everything together, yeah, but, right? But, and now, also, it might look very simple, but we also fine tune it. I will get. We, we will probably get into that. All right. Um, indexes. Is this boring already? Is not. Oh wow! Are you sure? Nice. All right. So indexes. All right. So. What indexes are basically is how to structure the data. So we have five minutes to the end of the current breakout sessions. All right. So we kindly ask that our facilitators begin to wrap up. I think generally in the music space. I was not happy. I'm not happy that this is ending. I love you guys. I really want to stay. So can we beg them for extra one hour? Please give us one more hour. All right, but let me run through. So indexes are basically how you structure the data, right? So launching gives you vector stores, retrievers and loaders, gives you splitters. So if I lost you, I'm sorry, this slide will be shared. I just want to run through because of our sign. So, so basically this is what the vector store does. Stores, so in the vector store, it stores the data via indexes. The loaders and retrievers help you get the data. Um, so let's talk about memory. Memory is basically where you store your data in lamp chain. Um, yeah. So let's talk about agents, not agents meet. Um, so agents, agents in lamp chain allow you to get, so the problem with ChatGPT is that you can't, ChatGPT cannot access Google information, right? It can't access real time data. So but what agents would help you do would be to combine your model with the, web, with the web, with an internet source, a data source, wherever you want, right? And to train it together with it, right? And give you an output, like a GPT. All right, so I've said that already. It basically allows you to interact with external data and APIs and trains it. So also, some, I think something that is not here is that it trains it in a non-predetermined form. So it's basically more like, like, more like, like unsupervised learning. So just finding pattern with, it, with the LLM, using the LLM, the data you have, and you have on the internet or whatever source you are trying to pick data from. Yeah? All right. Um, so this is what, these are tools on the, um, the Lang Chain agent model. model. So the agent class is the core component, provides a, yeah, 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 all of this. 
Because of time, sorry. Sorry, guys. Because of time. Um, so, we are supposed to do a workshop. And we will do it. Because I prepared for it. All right. It's good, right? Because people are still listening to it. Any question before we... Any question? Any question? Any question? All right. After... After 40 something weeks. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Fuat. Um, one question I want to ask. Earlier you said um, you would need a place to um, kind of train the model in production when you're connected to different LLMs, right? So, um, and I think that relates to another question I want to ask. Can you hear me? Okay, I said earlier when you started, you said you would need a place to, when you're uh, like creating a framework, right, you need a place to train the model, right, when you're connected to different LLMs. And it's also kind of connected to another question that I have. So when um, you're actually using an LLM, right, so why do you still need um, a place to then train um, new data, train the model uh, with new data, right? when um, you still send the uh, prompt to that LLM. And another question I want to ask, which might also relate to the answer you give to this, is when you just train this, um, I think you talked about, um, so yeah, yeah. So when you, when you um, kind of try to train um, the model on the new data that you have, is it being sent to that LLM to train, like um, you're talking about, um, you want to fine tune based on the new data that you sent to it. Is it being sent to that LLM to um, kind of fine tune that LLM, or there is a kind of smaller model you have that seems somewhere that, you, that does that? Yeah. Do you get the question? You might have pushed your video. Any other question? Is it related to what he said? Let me quickly answer it. All right. So. Uh, like unlimited money. Okay. So okay. You All right. So let me just answer it. Let me just answer this here. So for your question, now what Langton really does is um, it takes that LLM. So I want to build a Jiro GPT. Now the GPT models are as good as the data they have. If they've not been trained on a particular data set, they would at best hallucinate. Right? So I want new data, my kind of data. And we know that tomorrow Trump says something, Elon Musk says something, there's a full data set that has been created. So what you basically want to do, instead of creating the wheel, what you basically want to do is to take an LLM, put it on your, for instance, a flutter wave data, everything they have, so that me as a, I as an employee can ask that GPT a question. Sorry, the model, the bot. A question and it would give me answers related to flutter wave give or take it might be high high level access um answers um data and stuff like that i don't know if you get what i'm saying all right attention please so now i cannot you don't like anime what, what? <laughs> well i think to leave the class before so my question my question is regards to like um using other models outside of GPT. So personally, I'm trying to work on this thing. So are there, how do you benchmark performance for different LLMs, essentially? How do you benchmark performance in deciding on which one to use for your chatbot? Right? Are there some that perform better than the other? Are there others that don't perform? You know, machine learning is about experimentation. So the best place you can start from is the Hugging Face Hub, right? Where they've, they've showed you the best models, the best models to use. You could pick ideas from there. But the best advice is to use more than one model so that you get the one that really suits your use case. So machine learning is experimentation. You have to keep. Please, auditorium, without 